Good early morning from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. I'm John Innsbrucker, the Falcon Principal Integration Engineer, and welcome to the webcast of the Iridium 7 mission. Now today we're flying 10 Iridium Next satellites to join the 55 satellites SpaceX previously placed in orbit for Iridium. Now, as you can see from the camera view, the weather, the good news is the weather's excellent for launch from Vandenberg. The bad news is the excellent weather has resulted in the fog coming in, especially in the last few minutes, and we cannot see the Falcon 9. The live view you're seeing is from a camera looking up at Falcon 9. Uh, we'll try switching to other cameras as we go through, but we may have to wait until we lift off and we get views looking back at Earth from the onboard cameras on the Falcon 9. Now we're currently 13 and a half minutes for launch. The launch is scheduled for four hours, 39 minutes, 30 seconds, Pacific Daylight Saving Time this morning and that's 11 hours, 39 minutes, 30 seconds universal time. Now I'm broadcasting from the mezzanine here at SpaceX headquarters overlooking our launch and mission support centers. This is our 14th launch of the year for SpaceX and we're flying a new Block 5 booster today which we'll, we will be landing on our West Coast drone ship called Just Read the Instructions. Now one word of note about weather, while it's great for the Falcon 9 going up, the weather in the Pacific is bad. We have high wind shear right over the deck of the drone ship. We have choppy seas, so today's landing attempt is going to be very iffy. Now I'll be providing updates throughout today's launch and flight, and that'll last us just over one hour after liftoff. Now, for music fans out there, get ready in a couple of minutes. Iridium has curated a special Spotify playlist to go along with today's launch. Now to play along at home, search for the Iridium Launch Soundtrack Playlist and get ready to start that playlist at exactly T minus 10 minutes and 30 seconds. You can see the clock on the monitor. You're about two minutes away. Punch it off at 10 minutes, 30 seconds. And if you miss that, you can catch up later on and resynchronize your playlist. But for now, 12 minutes and 13 seconds and counting down on the launch of Iridium Next. Today's launch is from Space Launch Complex 4 at Vandenberg Air Force Base. Now we'd show that to you, but it's all fogged in right now. There's a shot of it. You're actually looking at the bottom of the Falcon 9 rocket. Now the Vandenberg launch site's about 225 kilometers northwest from where I'm sitting in the SpaceX factory. Now the two-stage Falcon 9 rocket stands 70 meters tall on the launch pad. That's longer than the wingspan of an Airbus 380 or a Boeing 747. The first stage, which the camera is looking at here, you can see a little bit of the black landing legs peering through the mist. That first stage takes us out to the edge of the Earth's atmosphere. Now on top of that is the second stage. That will carry the 10 Iridium Next satellites from the edge of space and accelerate them to the orbital speeds of just over seven and a half kilometers per second. And then on top, which you can't see in the view, is the 17-foot diameter payload fairing inside of which are those 10 Iridium Next satellites. Now for this mission, in addition to landing the first stage on our drone ship, or attempting in the case of today because of the weather, we're also attempting to recover a payload fairing before it splashes into the ocean. Our recovery ship, Mr. Steven, is upgraded with a four times larger net than the last attempt, and it left port on Monday evening, it's on station. No one has attempted to recover a fairing out of the air before. It's super difficult. And today, with the weather, not only for the drone ship, but where Mr. Steven is, again, high wind shear in the last thousand feet or so above the ocean, choppy seas, again, recovery of the fairing is going to be very difficult. But 
full recovery of a launch vehicle and reuse is the key vision that we've got at SpaceX. So we're trying to learn to do the fairing and then eventually the second stage someday. Next to the rocket, what you can't see would be the transporter rector. That has the plumbing and the electrical systems that support the vehicle. Now, unlike our East Coast launch site at Vandenberg, you'll hear the erector reclining about 23 degrees away from the rocket, starting at T minus four and a half minutes. Now, one reminder, we mentioned the Iridium 7 launch soundtrack playlist. That started at 10 minutes and 30 seconds. If you didn't get a chance to synchronize then, you can look ahead and just synchronize another selection when you see the time show up here on the webcast display. Now, as you may have been able to tell from the tone of my voice, the good news is the SpaceX team is working no issues on the Falcon 9. Uh, we started tanking at T minus 35 minutes, loading propellant, both liquid oxygen and fuel onto the Falcon 9. This is the faster timeline that we use on the Block 5 Falcon 9, and it's our standard for the fleet from now on. Now, the term Block 5 I've used a couple of times. That's a name that we have applied here at SpaceX for a collection of upgrades that we've made to the Falcon 9 that improve the reliability, the safety, and the performance of the launch vehicle. Now, currently, fuel is completely loaded on the second stage. We're still loading fuel on the first stage. That'll wrap up about six minutes before launch. Liquid oxygen loading is in progress on both the first and second stage. That'll wrap up in the last couple of minutes before liftoff. Our next major activity coming up in just over a minute is opening the pre-valves and beginning to chill in the nine Merlin engine turbo pumps in preparation for engine ignition in the last couple of seconds of the countdown. On the spacecraft side, the Iridium Next team has transferred their satellites to internal power at T-minus 15 minutes. They're working no issues. They're ready for launch. The range at Vandenberg is ready to support. Air and sea areas are clear, and they've been giving us weather balloon support throughout the morning. And as you can see from the weather, uh, everything is good for an on-time launch. It's just that we're managing to hide the Falcon 9 from everybody's view this morning, but we should get a look once we get into space using our onboard cameras. So at T-minus 7 minutes, 26 seconds and counting, everything looking good for an on-time launch of Falcon 9. Now today's flight has a launch window that lasts one second, so any delay would cause a scrub. We do have a backup launch opportunity tomorrow if it was needed. Now this very short window that we have is due to the need to precisely position the 10 Iridium Next satellites in relation to the 55 that are already on orbit. Now the second stage will complete two burns this morning, putting everybody into the final orbit. From there, the 10 Iridium Next satellites will be deployed. That's gonna happen about 56 minutes after liftoff. We'll release them one at a time every 100 seconds. Now, as we saw in previous flights, the second stage camera can't see all of the Iridium Next satellites. The field of view isn't large enough, can't see behind the dispenser, so we'll see some of them come off, but not all of them. Now, as the second to last launch of the Iridium Next program, today's mission will increase the total number of Iridium Next satellites in space to 65. Now, when completed, the network will have a total of 66 active satellites, as well as nine in-orbit spares. And here's a look at how the Iridium Next network is connecting people with information. Why are we building the new $3 billion Iridium Next network? To supercharge the innovative solutions our partners are producing every day, everywhere around the world. Iridium's business was founded on handsets for satellite communications, but has evolved because of the ingenuity of our partners, both the solutions they create and the markets they serve. Their specialized knowledge paired with our network connects people and information in ways most of us are unaware of. Supply chain solutions that track food traveling from remote farms to help it arrive at your local grocery store in optimal condition. Applications that support agricultural efficiency for farmers so they can optimize their growing operations. Solutions that allow pilots to relay coordinates, streamline operations, and provide access to vital flight data. 
maritime solutions like satellite-connected buoys and self-guided solar-powered drones that help fishermen implement sustainable marine resource monitoring, as well as solutions to detect and track sharks to help keep swimmers safe. Companies with remote workforces use our partners' products to monitor equipment, help ensure the safety of lone workers, and when needed, to direct crews out of harm's way. First responders on land and at sea use our partner solutions to communicate even when cell towers and phone lines are destroyed. And of course, explorers, scientists, and adventurers use Iridium solutions to keep them connected, even when they are off the grid. The Iridium Next Network will turbocharge the connections that matter, driving innovation for years to come. But that's just scratching the surface. These are just a few of the Iridium Partner ecosystem. Over 400 companies who are connecting their customers all over the planet. Together with our partners, we will push the boundaries of what it means to be always connected. Faster speeds, greater capabilities, and the truly global coverage of Iridium Next will be the platform that supports data-driven applications, autonomous innovations, and unique services that wouldn't be capable on traditional networks. Iridium Next, enabling the innovations that are changing the future. That gave you a better sense of the connectivity the Iridium Next network will provide. We're just over three minutes from launch. Everything continues to look good. The erector has reclined. You can't see it. We're still using our ground level cameras, but the fog has just got them covered over. It's that security blanket we see at Vandenberg. We've also heard the thrust vector control actuator motions on the upper stage look good. Everything continues to go well. We're getting ready for closeout of first and second stage liquid oxygen loading. Uh, you can see on the screen right now we are venting gaseous oxygen. We're getting that cold from the oxygen. It's causing the moisture in the air to condense. If you see a lot of white vapor around the rocket, that's the water vapor. That's normal during the countdown. Two and a half minutes to go. The Iridium team is go for launch. They're monitoring data. They're ready for liftoff. The range is go, and the weather, other than the fog, is good for liftoff, but as a reminder, the downrange weather is very iffy for both first stage and fairing recovery due to the strong wind shear uh, just above the deck at 1,000 feet plus the choppy seas. There is a backup launch window if anybody calls hold. That will be tomorrow about five and a half minutes earlier than today. But now at two minutes, T minus one minute, 56 seconds and counting, let's listen to the final countdown. Stitchy locks look complete. Vehicles internal. That gas close up to complete. Falcon 9's in startup. Stage 2, press for flight. Go for launch. Stage one, present for flight. T minus 15 seconds. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. Lift off the Falcon 9. Go 
with the two gun range. Did one for both of them, no, no. Avionics power and telemetry nominal. T plus 48 seconds after liftoff, Falcon 9 leaving Earth under 1.7 million pounds of thrust. We're throttling the nine Merlin engines right now as we get ready for the period of a maximum dynamic pressure as the vehicle goes supersonic. Vehicle is supersonic. We've heard a call out, vehicle is supersonic. The Merlin engines have throttled back up. We're through the period of maximum dynamic pressure. We've heard call out, propulsion is nominal. Avionics is reporting nominal status also. Vehicle has passed through maximum aerodynamic pressure. Next activity we share here call out is the start of MVAC chill. That's again preparing the turbo pump MVAC on the second chill. stage. And we've heard the call that the chill looks good. Hawthorne acquisition of signal. Hawthorne acquisition of signal, that means our antenna here at Hawthorne has also acquired the first stage and the second stage. Now next major activity coming up in just about half a minute, shutdown of the nine Merlin engines followed by stage separation, ignition of the second stage engine, and then immediately after that, we will flip the first stage and do a boost back burn as part of the landing sequence. Getting a good view from onboard camera, the ground cameras aren't able to follow the rocket due to the fog today. Miko. Stage one is in air to flip. In fact, ignition. Stage one's in the boost back burn. We've heard the call out. Stage one is in the boost back burn. The second stage successfully separated and lit. Getting some great views from space. The sunlight was right. We'd be getting some great uh, plume illumination, but it's a little early in the morning still here on the west coast. Boost back burn continuing. Bearing separation confirmed. Stage one boost back shutdown. We've heard the call out boost back shutdown and on the right hand side we've got fairing separation. The 10 Iridium next satellites now exposed to the vacuum of space. Now the boost back burn that we just saw on the left screen, the first stage uh, did a burn that had uh, some velocity that canceled part of its downrange speed. It won't return all the way to Vandenberg but it is headed to the drone ship that's about 235 kilometers downrange. Stage two is following a nominal trajectory. That call out stage two following a nominal trajectory, what we like to hear, second stage going right down between the predefined limits on the map that I'm looking at, showing that we're on target, we're on course. Pressurization temps, that's the hot helium we inject in the second stage, look good as we continue on into the burn of the second stage. Now currently we're about four and a half minutes, four minutes and 20 seconds into flight. The first stage has reached apogee. While it was lighting its engines a minute ago, it continued to climb. It's now reached the highest point called apogee. It's now beginning to descend to the drone ship in the Pacific Ocean. Some nice views from space, especially compared to the, what the fog did to our cameras at ground level. Second stage continues to be nominal. The uh, upper stage engine is at full power. Everything's looking good. Now coming up next in less than half a minute is the entry burn. 
That'll be like the boost back burn we had a couple minutes ago. We're going to use the same three restartable first stage engines. We light the center engine and then a second later we light the two outboard engines. And that'll slow us down to prepare us to go subsonic and get ready for the burn that will land us hopefully on the drone ship. Stage one's in entry burn. You've heard the call out, stage one's in entry burn. You can see two of the titanium grid fins back illuminated by the burn from the three Merlin 1D engines. Stage one entry burn shutdown. Shutdown of the entry burn. We're at six minutes and 15 seconds. In about 30 seconds, we're gonna have the landing burn. Now as a reminder, Stage one the weather FDS has and the sea conditions are fairly rough. They're the worst that we've ever had for trying to get a first stage back on the drone ship. So it's going to be a little bit uh, iffy here this morning. Meanwhile, second stage continues to be on trajectory, performance looking good. Now when we light the engine, we'll be down to about 650 miles an hour and then in 30 seconds, stage one's transonic. we will be landing. Stage one landing burn startup. Waiting for the downlink from the drone ship or from the Falcon 9. Stage one landing leg deploy. And landing bird shut down. We've heard a call out, landing legs deployed, then we heard landing shut down. Uh, we don't have a very good picture, but we think we have a first stage on the drone ship. Meanwhile, second stage continues to burn, coming up on eight minutes into flight. We'll get second stage engine shut down in about half a minute, following which we'll enter a 43 stage minute coast. We've heard the call out stage two's in terminal guidance. That means we are now doing the math. You know, for those who've stage done the high AFPS guidance math, saved. they know how we're, ear we're guiding ourselves into the final orbit, and then we'll shut down the engine. Go. We've heard the call out of Seco. And looking at GNC confirms good orbit insertion. The guidance plots we have in front of it, and we just well, a good one. Expected. Second stage is right where we want it to be. And it also appears, although we are hoping to get a view LS back Cook from the expected. drone ship, that the first stage is on the drone ship, but there weren't any lights. So all we saw was the flicker of the engines as we shut down. Now on the fairing recovery attempt, there's no news to report right now. The fairings are slowly descending on parachutes. We are into a coast phase. This is going to last uh, just over 40 minutes. We're gonna come back with live commentary at T plus 50 minutes into the webcast where we'll see the second burn of the upper stage and then the deployment of the 10 Iridium Next satellites. Now for those who are following along on the Iridium 7 Spotify playlist, it's going to continue playing. It goes all the way to the end of the webcast. So there's music behind coast phase. There's music behind getting ready to deploy the satellites. I want to be free. So you can listen to that all the way through if you're logged on to Spotify and following the list. So with that, I'll be back at T plus 50 minutes to continuing following the mission of Iridium 7 on Falcon 9.
Rishis acquisition signals. Welcome back, John Esbrecher at SpaceX headquarters here at the webcast desk. We're just past 50 minutes into flight. Catch you up on a few things. Uh, there is a shot uh, cleaned up a little bit now. You can see the first stage is successfully on the drone ship. It fought off the wind shear, it fought off the sea state and nailed the landing. So first stage is looking good. Second stage, uh, as you noticed, as we flip back and forth between the two views looking at the engine, in one view, there's a gasket. That's actually inside the camera. It came loose, but it's captive. It can't get out. It's not a risk to the mission. And then we promise you fairing status update. Uh, the recovery ship did confirm that we had bad weather out in the Pacific with that wind shear. They did see the payload fairing coming down, but they were not able to catch it in the net. We will continue to attempt that in the future as we learn how to bring fairings back and then reuse them. Now we're getting ready for ignition of the upper stage engine. This is a short four second burn. This is gonna move the 10 Iridium Next satellites into their desired final orbit. So ignition should be coming up in about 20 seconds. Recognition. Nominal orbital insertion. And there you've heard the call out. We have nominal orbit insertion. The second stage engine ignited. We had a nice view of it right before ignition. Did its four second burn. The orbit looks excellent. We're up at around 625 kilometers in a circular orbit. And so the next phase is gonna be about five minutes from now when we are going to deploy the 10 Iridium Next satellites. We'll do that on 100 second intervals. So we're gonna hold the commentary again. We'll be back at T plus 56 minutes to follow the deployment of the Iridium Next satellites.
plus 56 minutes into the launch of Falcon 9 with 10 Iridium X satellites. We're currently 32 seconds away from the deployment of the first satellite. I think this one will be able to see that view from the second stage camera looking forward. It looks like possibly in the upper left we may see the first satellite drifting through the, a little bit through the field of view when we get to deployment. Now as a reminder, every 100 seconds we'll be deploying another one of these. We're passing over Africa right now. We're using a variety of ground stations, so we may be able to bring you coverage of all of them. If we don't, we'll update you when we've got data. Spacecraft separation confirmed. And we have confirmation of separation. You can see it drifting through the top of the screen. One down, nine to go. We'll be back in 85 seconds with the second deployment. Coming up on the second satellite deployment in just under 10 seconds. Great view of the satellites with the Earth in the background. Data coming down through the Malindi ground station in Africa. Spacecraft separation confirmed. Guidance and avionics engineer in this case. Uh, confirms the second spacecraft is separated. We now begin the standard 100 second cycle as we prepare for deployment of the third spacecraft. Coming up on deployment number three, I believe this one's out of the field of view if the map that I've got is correct. And we'll just hear a verbal call out. Spacecraft separation confirmed. Confirmation from avionics. Spacecraft has separated. Next up, the fourth satellite in one minute and 23 seconds. Plaza signal expected. 
Uh, Melindy is tracking, but it only has network, no video. Dubai acquisition. We're coming up on the fourth deployment. You just heard the call out. Dubai has acquisition of signal. We may get some video. The Melindy ground station has been tracking us. And now we've got signal courtesy of the Dubai ground station. Spacecraft separation confirmed. There you go. It's a great view of satellite deploy. There are two stacks of Iridium satellites, five on top, five on the bottom. We're deploying off of the top stack right now and you got a great view of the fourth satellite being deployed. Just over 10 seconds away from the fifth deployment. I think on the Spotify list, we're playing Let's Dance right now. An old favorite. Now this satellite will not be in view of the camera. We'll only hear the verbal call out. Spacecraft separation confirmed. Confirmation. Fifth spacecraft confirmed. That cleans up the upper tier. All five satellites deployed off of the upper half of the dispenser. We'll now begin deploying the lower five satellites. Again, a few will be in the field of view and a couple will not be. Ten seconds away from deployment of the sixth satellite. You can see views of the engine. Now we're looking forward. I think we'll get a view of this one drifting through the field of view of the camera attached to the second stage. Spacecraft separation confirmed. A nice view. We're getting great views from the camera. Data transmitted to us down through the Dubai ground station. We're passing over Africa, the Horn of Africa heading our way up into the European Asian continent. One comment on the engine view right now, you can see at the edge there was that white puffy uh, object at the end of one of the tubes. That is solid oxygen. There's still some oxygen left in the second stage of the Falcon 9. And in order to uh, prepare the turbo pumps, keep them maintained, we purge and make sure we drain out anything that's in the pump. And the oxygen as it comes out into space freezes, and so that is solid oxygen.
Boss of Signal Melindy, expected. We have passed out of range of the Melindy Africa ground station, still getting data through Dubai. Coming up in less than 10 seconds, deployment of satellite number seven. And there it goes. Spacecraft separation confirmed. Our avionics engineer confirming what we got to see with the great views off of the Falcon 9 looking forward. Ten seconds to deployment of the eighth of ten Iridium satellites. This one will be out of the field of view. Ah, oh, we actually just saw a bit of the corner. Payload deploy confirmed. We have confirmation. Uh, I'd like to thank the the uh, second stage camera team for giving us an angle that let us see one that uh, I don't think we've seen uh, in the past. Two satellites to go. Coming up on the deployment of the ninth satellite, that should be the one right smack dab in the middle of the field of view. And off to the right, I think you can also see uh, one of the other Iridium satellites as we begin to trail along. Payload deploy confirmed. Another great view of an Iridium satellite coming off of the Falcon 9 dispenser mounted on the second stage. Nine satellites complete, one to go in one minute and 20 seconds.
coming up on the 10th and final Iridium satellite deployment. Final spacecraft separation confirmed. An avionics engineer with a cheery voice announces final spacecraft separation deployment. All 10 Iridium next satellites, 10 for 10, a clean sweep again. This is going to bring an end to our webcast, and it's been a great webcast for us. Falcon 9 launched right on time. We had uh, great weather uh, for liftoff, except for the fog that kind of hit everything. Be curious well, to see what everyone, the launch photo looks like. Separation. First stage did its job and made it down despite the weather onto the drone ship. Second stage went into the planned two orbits, very accurate. And you just saw over the last 15 minutes, all 10 Iridium Next satellites deploying right on time with some great views as we passed over Africa and Asia. I'd like to thank our Iridium customer, the United States Air Force for range support and our licensing agency, the Federal Aviation Administration. Please follow us on social media, on Twitter and Instagram. You can also check out our website, it's spacex.com. If you're inter interested in joining us, check out spacex.com careers. I'd like to thank you for letting us share the mission of Falcon 9 with you. I want you to join us on our upcoming flight of the spacecraft named Mariputi out of Cape Canaveral and of course, our final flight for Iridium, the Iridium 8 mission, later this year out of Vandenberg. Also, like thank Iridium for their playlist on Spotify. Makes me want to go take a look at putting one together myself, see if I too can be a great curator. With that, thanks everybody, and have a great day.